So here we can see that there are three layers of ink layered on top of each other. It's just solid ink, but the ink is transparent so that when they overlap each other, which is called offsetting, we get the different colors. We get the oranges, we get the reds, we get the, the greens, right? And then that is cyan, magenta, and yellow. And that is C-M-Y. And then K stands for the black. Because without black, you just have lots of pretty colors, right? The black is going to give all the, the shades and the, the tones to those colors. So you'll notice that my beautiful, clean vector line work of the black, even where the black was solid, has been turned to dots. So that is a downside of digitally processing film work, right? But what I could do is then bring a vector line work back into this, just the lines, not the, the shading, and keep that clean. But here we have the black on top of the yellow. Now this is a really nice one to look at. Black and yellow actually look pretty good if you're limited to two colors because the yellow is at a dot angle of 90 degrees. You guys all see that? And then the black is always at a dot angle of 45 degrees. And this is where we get that term a uh, half tone because this is what's called a half drop pattern. So when we just look at the black, the dots are like bricks in a wall. So this is a nice example here. So the dots line up, it looks like on a horizontal, but then the next horizontal, they shift over by half. And that's how you get the 45 degree angle that they're actually lined up on. So when you combine all those together, this is kind of the, the color separation you get, right? So how do we do that? Well, we can do it with any image, any full color image. So if I go back to my original, you can see that this looks a whole lot more vibrant than this, right? And that's the problem with having low resolution printing, not many dots. This is only, I think, a 25 dots per inch, right? Instead of the 350, which is our, our lab standard. But this is how we do it. First, we have to change the mode. So we go to image mode. And I want you to know about modes because sometimes they can cause trouble in digital files. Right now, the mode is RGB color, which is how you can see millions of colors on a digital screen. RGB stands for red, green, blue. Those are the light primaries. And when the light primaries mix, all of them mix equally together at full intensity, you get white light, right? So those are the only colors in your monitor, red, green, and blue lights. So it makes sense that RGB would be the default mode for Photoshop. But if we change it to CMYK color, that is what's called the pigment primaries. And the pigment primaries give us color that looks very much the same, but it's just a little less vibrant on the computer screen because light can give you more, right? But here's the big difference. Next to layers, and you can find this under window if you need to, you're gonna find channels. Channels is like layers, but it's not for us, it's for the computer. So this is how the computer sees, right? When it's in RGB mode, so if I go back before I converted it to CMYK, if we look at the channels, you'll see that there is a combined RGB channel but then there's an individual blue channel, which the computer will just see as gray, black, and white. What this is, is what's called an alpha map. This is the computer's programming for where to turn on its blue lights. <laughs> and if it's white, then it turns on all of its blue lights. If it's black, it turns off all of its blue lights there. So when we add two of these together, it will actually color them. So you can see this is all the green lights turned on where they're supposed to be turned on and all the blue lights turned on where they're supposed to be turned on. And when it's gray, let's look at the green channel, it's gray where the green lights are turned on just a little bit, right? So that's what green and blue gets us. This is kind of weird. Notice there's no yellow channel in light. So green and blue light together give us, gives us yellow because as you add light, it gets lighter and lighter, which is the opposite in pigment. 
And then if we add the red, we get the full color, right? But red on its own looks like this. So all of these are grayscale, right? But they are not all the same grayscale. <laughs> So the blue channel is a lot darker on this side. The red channel is a lot darker back here. The green channel is kind of not really dark anywhere. It's kind of evenly spaced. And all together, they give us this image. When we switch to a mode of CMYK, now it's, it's going to show us, even though it's still making it with light, it's going to show us what it looks like with inks. So when it communicates with the printer, First, we have a black channel in gray. But here, wherever it's black, that's where the ink is going to be the most. Right? Then we have the yellow channel with the black. But if we separate only the yellow, we see how it's really black where there's the most yellow. <laughs> Does that make sense? So this is what the film work looks like for the printing press. Because where it's black, that's where the most ink goes through. Just in this case, that ink is yellow, not black. So we put them together, it looks like that. Magenta is more spotty. And then cyan is, is kind of all over too. Now, how do we separate the grayscale channel? Let's do yellow. Well, no, let's do cyan. We'll start with the C. So now I have to isolate that channel and I have to delete the others. So I drag them down to the trash. This is to make film work. And this is what my action does for you. So I'm going to take away the different channels. And so because there's only one channel, there's no two colored lights mixing, so there's no color. It's just the lights either on or off at different degrees. Then I have to change this into ink and inks can't be thinned out or thickened, right? So they have to be grayscale. So I have to change the mode to grayscale. And then I have to change the mode to bitmap. So bitmap is the computer code for it's either on or off. And then I get to say what the output is, and if I want it to be vintage, I may make it a really low output, like 25. But even if I make it, let's do 300, right? And if I use the halftone screen method of making dots, then I can decide how many there are. And if I'm doing cyan, I want 15 degrees, right? And now it will show it to me in this half drop pattern. Yeah, and it's like old video games with low resolution. That becomes, then I would save this file and it would become the film work for the printing press. Except this would be labeled cyan. And so they would flood this, this screen with blue ink and it would only go through where the most, you know, this would be highly cyan. <laughs> this would be less cyan. Because wherever it's black here would be cyan ink. So to make my action, I then take that channel, uh, not that channel, I'm sorry, that film work, and I just replace the blacks with the color I want, and then I layer them all up. So they mimic the inks. All right, this is what I want you to know. In order to reproduce that effect, you need to know the different angles that the inks are printed at. And that's why I want to show you this. And you can find this in any print communications book. Oh my gosh. Okay. And basically the rule is this. Blacks are always at 45 degrees. Yellow is always at zero or 90 degrees. It's the same thing. You don't want anything within 30 degrees of the um, black. And you want the colors offset from each other by 15 degrees. So those are the rules, but this is then how it looks. If I can get to my library. <laughs> I logged in. All right, I can't right now. 
I've never tried to just Google it because I have it in a book that I can pass around. But if I Google halftone separation dots and the angles, they're called dot screens. I should be able to get it. Foiled by the slow computer. So halftone dot angles, C M Y K. Here we go, beautiful. So you can find them in lots of print guides, right? And anyone that works with a printer or with a vendor will have kind of a print guide. So here we have yellow at zero degrees, which is the same as 90 degrees. We have black at 45, right? And then cyan is 15 degrees and magenta is 75 degrees. And all together, that gives us what we call the Gaussian rose, where everything is perfectly balanced and how it's offset. If you mess those up, you end up with just a lot of brown because the dots hit on top of each other too much. All right. You can see the rosettes there. And then that is it.